It is time once again for a seasonal anime preview guide. Today I'm talking about the 2019 anime season, of which I've only seen like 16 shows or so. There wasn't actually as much as I'm used to this season for some reason. At least it was available in general for streaming. Let's dive right into it with Amazing Stranger on Crunchyroll, a rather etchy series combining um, hand-drawn character with a CGI main character. The main reason she's CGI is she's, a, she's an, a doll. And what's kind of funny about the show is that it plays around a bit with otaku culture because um, she is a cute anime figurine girl that the main um, otaku male character obsesses over and kind of sexualizes. But then they like play around with the fact that like she is a real person and sexualizing her is creepy. So it's kind of this weird quasi-commentary on how you know female characters are sexualized in otaku culture. Um, but definitely a fun, cute show, um, manages to definitely, um, uh, you know, hit on that weird aspect of things, um, without feeling too creepy about it, because it addresses it directly. So, interested uh, uh, by it, um, intrigued by it, fun and cute, um, not quite sure where they're going with it, though. Uh, it should be interesting. Then there's, uh, Ao Chan Can't Study, which, um, as you can tell, is a rather, um, uh, fun series, um, certainly one of those um, uh, lighter ones. Um, this one actually uh, kind of got, got us laughing because she basically just wants um, uh, to avoid men. She does, does not like men, um, mainly because her, her father is actually a um, uh, somewhat pervy guy. Um, he doesn't hit on her, but the, um, she just doesn't like men at all. And so um, it deals with sort of romantic tropes around those things, but from a very different perspective. So it, it will present an extremely romantic scenario, but then take the exact opposite um, direction with it. Um, so I really en enjoyed it for being a fun series, um, playing around with very shoujo tropes and things along those lines, um, and definitely knows where it's going with its comedy. So... Enjoyable, fun, definitely more of a funny series than anything else. Uh, moving on to Cinderella 9, a baseball anime. So if you're familiar with Princess 9 um, from the 90s, I think it was. Um, or Taisho Baseball Girls. Another one of those bunch of girls decide to start a baseball team. <clears throat> like every baseball anime, every sports anime, they're all terrible. But uh, they're going to form a team and try to actually do well. There is a twist at the end of episode 1, which I will not spoil here. Um, but there is some interesting, in other words, it's a little bit more than just that concept, uh, which I definitely appreciated. There seems to be some, some more stuff going on here. Um, but if you're into that, if you're into, you know, pretty girls all playing a sport, that is absolutely what this is. It was a little kind of by the numbers sports anime from much of it. Um, not much in the way of kind of interesting camera angles, stuff like that. But uh, definitely competently made and um, kind of interesting to see where that goes. And definitely one of those more uh, light, um, uh, soul-lifting kind of a series for this season. Moving on to Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. This is not a light, soul-lifting anime. It is quite the opposite of that. Very dark, very serious. Bad stuff happens to the characters. Um, what's interesting about this is, um, particularly b besides being very uh, dark and dramatic... Um, the character designs. It feels like there are three, at least three different character design styles in this show. The main character is very Shonen Jump. Um, a lot of the other characters are much more sort of traditional anime character designs, in my opinion. Uh, but then there are some other characters in the show that have some really um, uh, distinctive character designs. So, quite interested to see where that's going. Some neat elements here. Uh, also, clearly playing with some Shonen tropes in the sense of um, setting up various characters in various situations. And I will say, kind of like with the previous show, um, the end of episode one does twist some elements that you would expect to see. We were all kind of like, okay, we see where this is going. And nope, there's some surprising elements in this. So I'm very curious to see where this is going. Um, of the Shonen series I've seen recently, this is one of the few where I'm like, I'm willing to watch a few more episodes of this to see where it develops. I kind of like the idea and uh, what it's developing out of its uh, its concept. Moving on to Fairy Gone. If you like uh, Cowboy Bebop or Witch Under Robin or um, even maybe Bacano, um, some of the more serious uh, shows, some of the shows 
that take a more realistic approach to anime. Nobukano can be a little, you know, a little fantastical, but you know what I mean. Uh, uh, Wolf's Reign, perhaps. Fairy Gone is very much in that style. Um, characters do not super deform. Uh, you know, physics are, are very realistic. Although there is a supernatural element to this. Uh, the characters live in a world where you can essentially summon elementals to fight for you. And uh, um, uh, it is about various characters who are doing that. And there is uh, some backstory to, to some characters. And there's some, some drama to, to that. So it seems to be about a couple of central characters dealing with some, uh, some problems and some, some questions around their... Um, uh, who they are and uh, and and their backstories. So curious to see what that's going. I love a show that is uh, more realistic, more grounded, um, despite having these you know ridiculous you know huge monsters essentially getting summoned. There's still kind of a um, <clears throat> a physicality to it, a sense that these are real places. <clears throat> Even when a monster you know bashes through a wall, you feel like it's a real wall. Um, you feel like there's there are consequences to that somebody's gonna have to come back in and patch up that wall, um, so just really like that and I'm um, really intrigued to see where that one's going because there is some plot there is some there are some elements there, and I think that's gonna be a um, uh, a series that kind of sticks to its gun so to speak, which is a terrible pun. Moving on to Fruits Basket, this is a remake of the original Fruit, Fruits Basket, um, and from what I can tell, the idea was to retell a story that is more like the original manga. The anime famously or infamously kind of goes off in its own direction uh, compared to the story in the manga. And this anime is apparently supposed to be more manga faithful. However, the first episode of this uh, anime adaptation, from what I recall, and I've actually saw some of the original Fruits Basket not that long ago, it's practically a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original Fruits Basket. Every single beat is there pretty much exactly, even down to, like, pacing and editing and, like, that shot, then that shot, then that shot. So I wonder if they're basically just trying to bring in the anime fandom for Fruits Basket, basically saying, don't worry, it's going to be just like the anime you're used to, and then eventually they'll start making it more like the original manga. I don't know. I mean, granted, episode one of the original anime was pretty close to the manga as well, from what I understand. Um, so it's just kind of weird that this is... A remake, but it's like, here's the original show, just reanimated. So, who knows where they're going with that. Uh, definitely a good budget here. Definitely a um, uh, uh, very effective, you know, approach to the anime. One of those things where every time something happened, I'm like, yep, that seems to be a perfectly reasonable way of representing that and showing the characters. Um, seems a little faster paced than the original one. Um, despite being, you know, sh more or less shot for shot remake. Um... There's just a slightly more laid-back vibe to the original, so not sure if that's intentional or if that's just, you know, first episode vibes. Who knows? But if you like Fruits Basket, I mean, that's what you're going to get, and if you want to get back into, into Fruits Basket, this looks like a perfectly, you know, appropriate uh, way to do that. Moving on to Hitori Bochi, uh, which is a um, surprisingly cute little show. Um, as you can see, there's, um, I mean, it's basically, I mean, Look at it. It's it's really, really cute. Um, and I'm just pulling up a little bit of uh, information about this here because I admit uh, it's hard to remember what exactly this show was. Um, um, oh, yes. Sorry. So, Tori Bochi is a show about a girl starting middle school who has severe social anxiety around making friends. Um, but she's promised her best friend, her one friend, that she's going to make friends with all of her classmates but she finds that just overwhelming. Uh, and so, unfortunately, she, she tends to kind of overthink things, and it's all about these grand plans she, make, she makes, which completely fall apart in reality. So if you've, if you've heard of Watamote or seen Watamote, it's a little like that, um, only it's a little more, um, um, I don't know, it, it's not as extreme as Watamote, if you will. And so it, is, it seems to be about her, yeah, she, she does eventually start connecting with people, but she's definitely very bad at it. So it's fun watching somebody just really struggle with these things. But in a way that's not going to be, you know, she remains friendless for the entire series. There is going to be some progression of that. Um, and it's her kind of getting all worked up over trying to make overtones to somebody or whatever and coming off looking completely crazy as a result of that. Um, so again, fun, light comedy, you know, obviously. Um, also fun, light comedy, Joshi Kausei 
which are basically a bunch of, you know, typical high school girls having little, um, uh, you know, getting into little uh, situations and scenarios that are humorous. Very typical concept, except in this case, there's no dialogue at all. It is just characters interacting um, and you trying to understand what's going on through inference. There is uh, vocalization, so characters will go, you know, hmm, mm. whatever. All of the, those things are there, so there is like voice acting in that sense, but there are, there's no words in it, which is a really interesting take. Uh, I actually quite appreciated the kind of um, attention required to appreciate the humor in Josie Kause. I know a lot of people tend to watch anime kind of half paying attention, and that's not going to work for this series at all. So you're going to have to really watch the show and understand what's going on to understand what's going on. Uh, really interesting short anime series as well in terms of you know, episode length. So easy to just kind of uh, jump into things and, and see where that, uh, and uh, see if you like that kind of approach to, to things. Moving on to Midnight Occult Civil Servants. This is another um, somewhat more serious show. Um, animation budget's kind of uh, not, not quite great, but basic premise is essentially it's NCIS Supernatural. Um, uh, main characters go out at night and e end up interacting with various supernatural creatures um, because that's what they do. They kind of patrol and keep the realms of the supernatural and the realms of the humans from, uh, from uh, you know, intersecting too badly. And what's cool is the supernatural creatures are not like random monsters. They are people. Some of them are monstrous and just kind of like, you know, animals, but many of them are like people with who can talk and interact and so forth and so on. So it's not about like keeping the demons at bay. It is about you know you have humans over here and you have these other societies of other creatures over here and trying to make sure they don't spill out over into each other. Um, so it's kind of neat seeing that approach taken where there's a bit more about um, societies and about personalities and such. Um, uh, so I think there's a lot of potential there, and you see that in the very first episode actually deals with that. So I really like that, and I think it's an interesting uh, premise, and uh, seeing uh, what the different characters' exact um, abilities are is kind of interesting. Uh, so I really like that. Um, I also like, and I won't spoil it, but the uh, what the main character brings is an interesting twist. So uh, cool thing there. Um, I quite enjoyed the first show. Like I said, the first, or the, the animation was meh, but... Hopefully that will improve as the show goes on. Um, those things not uncommonly do. Moving on to Mix, which I have the wrong image for. So one second here while I grab the image for this and uh, fix that. Um, so moving on to Mix. So Mix is a baseball anime. It is sort of a reworking um, and actually a sequel of a famous baseball anime and manga called Touch which is available in English, at least the manga is. Now, this is set 30 years after the story of uh, Touch, which was actually, which is like historically how long it's been since there. And what's interesting is like it actually looks like this. Um, they, they took the character designs exactly from the original uh, story, and I believe that there was like a manga version of this. Um, and so it looks like an 80s anime. Uh, it's set in modern times, but the character designs are all very 80s. So just be aware of that. And it's a baseball story. Um, apparently it's going to tell more or less the same story as original Touch, but just, you know, um, in, modern, in, in the modern day and with the original story of Touch having happened in their timeline. So that is history for them. So quite curious to see where that, where that goes. Um, really enjoyed what I saw, but not sure uh, what we expect to see from that in the future. Um, but, you know, hey, whatever. Um... Um, interesting take, and again, very interesting seeing that visual style being taken with a show like that. Moving on to Namu Amidabutsu Utena. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar, Namu Amidabutsu is a, um, a phrase in Buddhism that you say over and over like a, a ritual phrase. Um, very important spiritual um, uh, uh, ritual phrase, for lack of a better term. Well, there's a word for that, but it's not coming to me right now. That's okay, we'll move on. Um, this is this interesting sort of middle ground between a lot of different concepts. Uh, basically, various famous 
uh, they're called bodhisattvas, um, Buddhist quasi-deities, are personified here as having come to Earth to deal with, um, to, to interact with the real world, kind of help people. And so on the one hand, it is like fighting off evil, demonic creature entity things that, that have spawned as a result of people's vices and people's sins, for lack of a better term, in, in the Buddhist sense. So when your bad karma has you know, built up and built up and built up as a result of your actions, then it can spawn these creatures that they're trying to then defeat. But it's also a weird slice of life comedy of all of these bodhisattvas living in the real world and having confusions about like washing machines. So there's that weird slice of life comedy aspect to it. And then there's also like actual religious philosophy worked in. So they actually like in episode one, they talk about and make a, a significant deal about the nature of, of bad karma, negative karma being inevitable and so the fact that like they can never truly wipe out bad karma right so what do they do so it's trying to do a lot of things at once um and a lot of hot guys so obviously playing to that demographic um when i finished the first episode i was like wow this is covering a lot of ground and it feels a little um little over much it feels like it's trying to do too many things at one time but i think it could be a lot of fun and i want to see kind of where it goes with that i want to i, I want to see if it kind of settles into a particular tone um i certainly would not mind watching more of it but definitely an, an, an odd one so fyi moving on to nobunaga teacher's young bride also an odd one also one you will not see on Crunchyroll unless you're logged in um, because it has a strongly etchy component. The main character is a descendant of Nobu, uh, uh, Oda Nobunaga, a famous uh, warrior general of Japan's past hundreds of years ago. And, spoiler alert, um, in episode one, the um, uh, Oda Nobunaga historical, his bride shows up in the real world to this modern man. Um, that's her in the upper upper right. Um, right there. And the problem is, like, she comes having just, like, um, she, like, she's on her way to meet Oda Nobunaga the first time, having just been married to him. Um, it being ancient Japan, she still didn't know him yet. And so she shows up. Um, the thing is, like, when they were married, she was 14. Because that's what you did back then. Um, and so he now has this, essentially, child bride now. And... The complexity is that um, she has, like, she is quite accepting of the fact that she is now in this situation, but she has very old cultural mores. She has no problem, you know, taking off her clothes in front of him because she is his, his bride and, you know, their job is now to have children. Um, you know, just a, 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 that is, a, that was a very matter of fact reality for girls of that age back then. So it is clearly like this etchy comedy. Um, but, like, all of the characters in the show are like, no, no, like, no, 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 we're not going there. So, um, this is actually listed un under, um, Punchy Roll is the uncensored version, although there is obviously censoring going on. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely a more adult-themed, uh, concept. Definitely more of a goofy comedy, you know, a uh, light, upbeat thing, thing. Definitely an etchy comedy, um. I found it fun because they strongly addressed that aspect of the show without making it feel too, too creepy, uh, if, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, the, the content will be something you may have difficulty with, but I, I found it to be something that I could deal with as an anime fan. If, if you're used to those concepts, you'll see it here, and I think they, they treat it without going too, too crazy. Speaking of too, too crazy... Sarah's on mine. Um, this is a show about characters pooping each other out. Um, it's a weird show by Kunihiko Iku, uh, Ikuhara, who is a very weird guy. And I say that because a friend of his said that at a con. And um, so he is the guy behind Revolutionary Girl Utena, Utena uh, Yurikuma Arashi, 
uh, Moaru Penguin Drum, a lot of admittedly weird shows. This is probably his weirdest show. He is famous for using a lot of symbolism, a lot of potent imagery, um, and for having very bizarre concepts in his shows. And that is very much what that is. And essentially he, he takes strange ideas and just goes for them whole hog and says, let's just make a show completely about that. And this is about Japanese kappa, who are monsters. Uh, well, monsters are perhaps over overselling it. Um, think about like the traditional European, say a goblin or a gnome, a creature that obviously has a life, obviously has a... Uh, a set of things it does, right? It, it, is, it, is, it does not exist entirely just to um, frighten humans. Uh, it's not like a, a hag or things along those lines. Um, a kappa is this strange water creature. And one of its powers is something I cannot describe here without YouTube possibly censoring me. Um, because it's really weird. And Ikuhara does, just takes that on and goes full scale with it. It's a weird show with a weird premise. There's a lot of interesting symbolism and imagery. There's a lot of things it's clearly trying to deal with about modern society and about how we treat each other and about um, sort of psychology. But it has this central organizing, um, not even organizing concept, but it has this central thing that has to happen in the show for things to happen. Um, kind of like a character's having a gun and they have to fire that gun. Um, firing the gun in this is something that is very hard to watch and just very, uh, I don't want to think about that. Um, and so th the thing is, I think that's the point. I think Ikuhara is doing a story and doing something that is very strange, um, because he wants you to be uncomfortable. He wants you to think about these things and deal with something that's just kind of, kind of bizarre. And this admittedly bizarre aspect of Japanese culture. And to be clear, this bizarre thing is like traditionally how this worked. So it's fascinating. It's bizarre. It's not a, a show that you would want to like immediately show to other people. You know, if you want to watch this, watch it alone first and then see where you go from there. Um, but definitely different. No question about that. Um, mm -hmm. Moving on to Senryu Girl, a much more happy slice of life comedy um, uh, about just various high school characters interacting. In this case, the main central character, the, the girl there in the center, has extreme social anxiety. So much so that, so that she has, she basically cannot talk in front of other people, but instead she has found comfort in composing uh, uh, poems, Senryu, which are a form of haiku, or haiku is actually a form of Senryu, I think. But it's the standard five syllable, seven syllable, five syllable, you know, speech pattern. And so she just walks around and whenever somebody asks her something, she writes down a Senryu poem and shows that as her answer to things when she asks questions. So it's basically a, again, sort of a slice of life comedy show, high school sh show, but one character, all of her dialogue is in poetry form. It's an interesting premise. Um, it also kind of deals with poetry, with how poetry can express thoughts in a very concentrated way, um, but does it in a very entertaining way. So I was thoroughly charmed by Senryu Girl. I think it is definitely a show where if you're interested in a show like that, that in that sort of show where, um, you know, it's going to be more, you want something that's light that you can just kind of enjoy and not really think about too much, but also has a little bit more there to play around with, Senryu Girl is probably that show of the season for you. Moving on to another comedy, We Never Learn. Uh, this is an anime series about a uh, high school boy who uh, is, uh, well, he is, frankly, poor. And he's really working his way up through the system, through hard work. And uh, in order to get the big scholarship he, he wants, he needs to tutor two girls. I'm not going to spoil uh, much more about that. Suffice to say that the, the, these two girls... Um, have real trouble with the su with the subjects that they're trying to learn, and are just absolutely hopeless in them, despite having other strengths. So it is very interesting because, on the one hand, it's definitely a comedy about you know dealing with with characters and, and being frustrated with them. There's it's a, there's a certain amount of frustration comedy in it, but on the other hand, um, the characters themselves are highly competent. 
in their own ways. So it's not, you know, this person is dumb. It's this person has this particular, you know, big, big weakness. And that is the one thing that they are trying to overcome. So I really liked that aspect. I, I found it interesting to, to explore, you know, um, dealing with somebody who is smart, but can't do, do this one thing. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people, especially a lot of geeks, often struggle with. So it, you know, makes sense to a lot of us. Um, and yeah, I think We Never Learn it was a, um, it's, it's a fun show. Also, um, pretty high budget and some interesting editing choices in there, some interesting camera angles. Um, definitely a very typical anime art style. Um, but visually, I think they're, they're trying to make this something engaging and, and interesting. So, you know, full marks for them on that one. Um, and I don't know, I just, I found it to be fun. You know, just, just, just fun. Um, also fun for somewhat other reasons. Uh, we have the etchy uh, anime comedy, Why the Hell Are You Here, Teacher, which is about a, a high school boy who ends up getting involved in various situations with his teacher that, uh, that have um, unintentionally um, pervy connotations. So he ends up in these situations with this woman, um, even though neither of them are interested in, in each other, they just, you know, get in these absurd situations where they end up having to be, let's say, very close. Um, it's funny. I, I did find it to be funny. I, I think they do a good job of presenting those situations in a way that makes it clear that this is completely unrealistic, um, but makes it just realistic enough for it not to, to feel, you know, out of this world absurd, um, and kind of lets you play around with those aspects of things. I think it's one of those things that definitely most people are, or a lot of people are just not going to be into for its basic concept, um, and for a lot of the various elements of it, but I think if you can get over the oddity of it and the, you know, sexual aspect of it and the you know, teacher-student aspect of it, especially because neither teacher or student are really interested in each other, they just kind of fall into these situations, um, I think it is a well-structured approach to that. I, I thought it, it, it did kind of come together with all those things. Um, probably not a show I'm going to watch much more of personally, but, you know... Uh, no major complaints on that score. I thought they uh, they handled that idea well. Um, finally, we have Yotogame Chan Kansatsu Niki, uh, anime series about. Um, so this is one in a um, a, a frequent thing uh, that we've seen, um, which are I don't know how to describe it. Um, I would call it like tourism anime. Um, anime that is, maybe prefectural anime, anime that is partly funded by a particular prefecture as an advertisement for that prefecture. So characters are, say, moving to this one prefecture, and it's all about how beautiful the place is. Um, and it's usually, like, you know, not done too obviously, um, but it's partly advertisement for that place. And this is about Nagoya. Uh, the main character is moving to Nagoya, and it's about kind of the situation he gets into, and his expectations of moving to Nagoya. Unfortunately, this is one of those uh, series where it plays off a lot of tropes around what people expect out of Nagoya. And since I'm not Japanese, I don't know what any of those are. And so without that context, a lot of the jokes kind of fall flat uh, for, a, no for a, a foreigner, you know, a non-native Japanese person. So... There's clearly effort here. There's clearly, I mean, the characters are cute. The situations are, are fun. The pacing is, is, as I recall, pretty pretty fast, um, which is important in a show like this. We kind of want to get to where you're going. And episodes are short. Um, but I didn't quite get a lot of the jokes in there uh, because it'd be like jokes about, you know, the New York Yankees winning all the time. If you don't know the, what the New York Yankees are or you don't know their reputation, those jokes just don't make much sense to you. So... This one, again, just didn't really work uh, much for me because of the basic concept. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of going to be the nature of that kind of a show. So those are all the series that I got a chance to watch this season um, for the spring 2019 season. Hope you found this useful and hope you get to uh, watch some anime this season and that you will find something that you enjoy. Until next time, watch more anime.